In this video, I'm going to talk about chemical symbol, atomic weight, and also isotope. In chemistry, for showing element, we use a symbol with two number. So we have a symbol, and there is two number, A and Z. The symbol for the element derived from the name of that element. This symbol, it can be one letter or two letter. Also, sometimes you can see the symbol with three letters that is for the recent element that is discovered in the laboratory. For example, the symbol for hydrogen is H. The symbol for carbon is C. The symbol for oxygen is O. So this is three example that the symbol of element has only one letter. And always this letter is capitalized. If we have symbol with two letter, the first letter should be capital and the second one should be lowercase, like argon, like platinum, or like chlorine. There is also some symbols that is derived from non-English name, like lead, silver, gold, and so on. There is two number to give more information about the elements, A and Z. Z is atomic number and A is mass number. Atomic number or Z is equals to the number of protons and mass number is equals to the number of protons plus neutrons. For example, for hydrogen, we have hydrogen 1, 1. This number, it shows us we have only one proton in the nucleus of the hydrogen atom. And if we subtract A and Z, we can have number of neutrons in our atom. So it shows this number P plus N is 1. So for this hydrogen, we have one proton and zero neutrons. Here is another example. Regarding this explanation, we have six proton in this atom. And then number of neutron is equals to mass number minus atomic number. So we also have six neutron. Number of electrons in these two example, it's equals to the number of protons. Because the hydrogen atom or carbon atom or any other atoms, they are neutral. When they are neutral, number of protons and electrons should be equal. Here is more example. Number of protons. In nitrogen is 7, in fluorine is 9, and in sodium atom is 11. Number of neutrons is equals to 14 minus 7 is 7. For fluorine, is 19 minus 9 it is 10 and for sodium it is 23 minus 11 12 atomic number it is very important because property of atom is completely depend to the number of protons in the atom put in another hand if we change number of protons in one atom that atom convert to another element. So why hydrogen atom has hydrogen property and helium atom is different because their atomic number is different. If we are able to add another proton to the nucleus of hydrogen, we can convert it to the helium actually. So all property of element, it is completely depend to the number of protons in the nucleus. And we can measure these numbers experimentally in the laboratory. But mass number or A, it's subtotal of protons and neutrons. Neutron doesn't have any effect on the chemical property of element. So we call this subtotal mass number because mass of protons is 18 36 times heavier than electrons and mass of neutrons is 18 37 times heavier than electrons so actually the electrons mass is almost nothing in the atom and more than 99.99 percent .99 the mass of the atom it is belong to the protons and neutrons so that is the reason we call this number 
mass number. Because neutron doesn't have any effect on the chemical property of atom, we may have different type of atoms for one element, that they have different number of neutrons. Like, this is the regular hydrogen we know. It has one proton and zero neutrons. But hydrogen has other type of atoms, like this again has one proton, but it has one neutron. And for this one, we have two neutrons. This different type of atoms for one element is called isotope. So these three atoms, they are isotope of each other, actually. Mass number is a very good estimate for mass of each atom, but it's not completely accurate. Dalton, during his research for developing the Dalton atomic theory, tried to measure the mass of atoms. But he wasn't able to measure the mass separately. He was able to measure mass of one atom relative to another atom. He selected hydrogen as a reference and he measured mass of the other atoms relative to the mass of hydrogen. During that time, nobody knows about the isotopes. So the measurements for the Daltons, it was the average mass of the all isotopes. Today, instead of using hydrogen, we have more accurate units for measuring the mass of the atom. Carbon 612 is the reference and 1 12 mass of this atom is our unit for measuring the mass of the atom. And we call it 1 Dalton or 1 AMU. AMU is means atomic mass unit. So based on this definition, the mass for carbon 612 is exactly equals to 12. When we check the periodic table and look at the mass of the each element, we see most of these elements, they have the fractional mass. For example, the mass for lithium is 6.94 or the mass for calcium is 40.078. This is the average mass of the all isotopes. So it is not the mass number because we know lithium has 3 and 7 as a mass number and atomic number. Or calcium is 20 and 40. So we can see these numbers, they are a very good estimate, but it is not exactly the average mass for the whole isotope. Let's have some example to see how we can calculate the average mass when we have different isotopes for one element. For the first example, I'm going to explain about chlorine. Chlorine has two different isotopes. Chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Chlorine 35 is exist 76% and chlorine 37 it exists only 24% in the nature and keep in mind the ratio of the isotope in the nature normally doesn't change so it's regardless of the source of that element they always have same ratio so here is the equation average weight is equals to sigma or subtotal of mass of each isotope times fractional abundance for that isotope. Let's assume for this example, the mass for each isotope is exactly equals to the mass number, just to make it easier. So the average weight for chlorine is equals to mass of the first isotope that is 35 times fractional abundance. So the abundance of this chlorine is 76%. But when it says fractional, it means it should be less than 1. So if we have percentage, we need to divide it by 100. So fractional abundance is 0.76, not 76%. For the second one, the mass of the isotope is 37. And the fractional abundance is 0.24 the amount for this part is 26.6 and the amount for the second is equals to 8.88 so the answer is 35.48 that's the average weight for chlorine 
Let's have another example. In this example, I would like to calculate the average weight for sulfur. Sulfur has three isotopes, 32, which exists 95% sulfur, 33 exists only 0.75% and sulfur, 34, 4.25%. So for first isotope, I need to multiply 32 by 0.95, mass of the atom times fractional abundance. For the second one, 33 times 0 0.0075. And for the last one, 34 times 0 0.0425. The answer for first part is equals to 30.4. For second one is equals to 0.2475. And for the last one is equals to 1.4. 445 and subtotal of all these three number is equals to 32.092 in the last example we have an unknown element that has 28 29 and 31 it has three different isotopes and the actual mass for each of these is equals to 27.95 29.03 and 30.94 and fractional abundance is equals to 0 0.85, 0 0.09 and 0 0.06. We would like to calculate the average weight for these unknown isotopes. We need to multiply mass and fractional abundance. So I'm going to multiply these numbers together. Keep in mind because we have actual mass for that atom, we cannot use this mass number. If we don't have these numbers, then we need to use the mass number. But right now, we cannot use it. So the answer for first one is equals to 23.76. For the second one is equals to 2.61. And for the last one is equals to 1.86. And the subtotal for these three is equals to 28.23. So this is the average weight for these unknown isotopes. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe our YouTube channel for watching more videos.